happy I'm not your presenter. All right, so just to kick things off, we are gonna be recording this session. Um, I have my co-pilot, Cheryl Chapman here, who's gonna be taking care of that. So thanks, Cheryl. We have an exciting announcement for everyone hot off the presses. Um, as you may know, we have been a bit uncertain about whether or not At One would be um, offering courses this summer. We are happy to share that on a trial basis, um, this has just been announced today, we do have summer courses offered for summer 2023. They're available on our website and drum roll please, this summer they are being offered on a trial basis as free to everyone in the California Community College System. So um, if that is you, then we invite you to jump on over to our website, catalog.onlinenetworkofeducators.org and register in one of our summer courses. We, we hope that we hope you enjoy that. Um, this session here today is part of our Going the Distance with Video series, and we have one more session after today that will be held on Thursday, May 4th, also known as Star Wars Day. And in honor of Star Wars Day, we will be joined by Jedi Gabriel Rivas Gomez and Jedi Fabiola Torres, who will be presenting Finding Balance in the Force, a Jedi's Guide to Humanizing Academy for Padawans. Check out the description. Uh, this is going to be a very fun session, as it always is when we are joined by these presenters. Um, but it's also going to be super informative, and it's going to be a buffet of video tools for you to choose from and humanize your online classes. So that'll be a very fun one, I promise you. And just a few tips for you. We are using Zoom webinar today. So your microphone and webcam are turned off. You're in listen only mode. Uh, we do have chat enabled for you so you can share reflections and resources with your colleagues. If you do that, we encourage you to toggle the blue button in chat to everyone so everybody can see your contributions. We also have a Q&A button in your Zoom toolbar, and I wanna encourage you to use that if you have questions for Julie. Uh, we've got a big audience here today. We're at 161 folks right now, but I'm anticipating many more to be joining in the next um, several minutes. So uh, the chat might get busy. So put your questions for Julie in the Q&A area, and we'll be keeping an eye on those during the session today. And finally, if you would like to view Zoom's automated uh, transcript feature, we do have that turned on and you're welcome to just tap the CC icon in your Zoom toolbar to turn it on locally on your, um, on your own screen. All right, folks. And um, I believe the recording's already started, so let's jump to that. Let's jump in. Um, again, I'm Michelle Pekansky brock I'm your host for today. It is a pleasure to have you all here. And um, I am going to introduce our speaker, Julie Gamberg, who is also, who is an English and Humanities instructor at uh, Glendale College and also one of our At One facilitators. We're very happy to have Julie here with us today to present how she's using PlayPosit, um, which is a tool that's available to everyone in the CCC system for free through CCC Tech Connect. And Julie's session is titled Spark Curiosity and Build Learner Autonomy with Interactive Video. So I'm going to stop sharing and turn it on over to Julia, Julie. And I, I do just want everyone out there to know I'm having some audio problems. You can hear me, but I can't hear you sometimes. So if there's a lag and I'm missing something, that's what's going on. So I just want to just put that plug out there so you all know what's going on on my end. Take it away, Julie. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Um, it is lovely to see so many folks here. And I, sorry, can everyone hear me fine? And see my screen? Great. Um, on a, on a uh, beautiful Friday morning. And thank you, Michelle, so much for organizing this series. This Going the Distance with Video series has been fire. So I hope that what I share with you today will be just as valuable. 
Um, today's session has the aim of leaving you with strategies to use video for increased and authentic engagement in the content that you've worked so hard to create and to curate. Um, this work has been the result of a lot of trial and error and robust student feedback. So I am delighted to share this with you and appreciate your time. So let's go ahead and get to it. And as Michelle mentioned, um, today I'll be using an interactive video tool called PlayPosit. And PlayPosit has, as Michelle said, been made available for free to all California community colleges through CCC Tech Connect and can be used inside Canvas. Here's a screenshot from PlayPosit's robust support page. So right away, you can kind of get the vibe of what this tool is. I'll be showing you how and why I began creating videos with reflective pauses and interactions and how much better my videos got the less I graded those interactions and the more I led with the goal of sparking wonder, curiosity, and learner autonomy. But before I get into that, I know that this tool is brand new for some of you, maybe many of you. So I'd like to introduce it briefly. I'm gonna show you around. And I'm also going to give you a sneak peek at a goodie bag that I have for you from PlayPosit of literally every single thing you need to start implementing at noon today, if you'd like. So um, truly, you don't need to take notes on the how-to part. You'll have all of these slides. Everything is hyperlinked from the slides. And um, Michelle is also um, providing a recording of this as well. So here's a screenshot of the student view. As instructors, we can add interactions to our own videos to curated videos like you find the kind you find on like YouTube or TED Ed. We can also splice those together, play and put interactions in them and play posit calls it end result a bulb. Um, we can embed those bulbs or I still call them videos um, right into the assignment page on Canvas. Any auto-graded interactions within the video will show up in SpeedGrader, will show up graded just like a quiz. And you can give additional feedback in SpeedGrader as you can with an assignment. For students, the experience is seamless. So let's close up on an assignment from student view. Let's see, let me refresh this and put it in student view. There we go. Okay, so um, you can introduce the assignment just as you normally would. I like to give them some PlayPosit resources the very first time they encounter a PlayPosit video in case they have questions. There's a nice um, learner experience video that shows them some couple cool things they can do as students, places they can take notes, see the take notes in the at points in the transcript and come back to them. Um, and I like to give them some extra resources as well the very first time. But in my experience, PlayPosit has been very intuitive to use as a student. And it's one of the few tools that I would say I almost never get questions about. So Let's dive a little bit more deeply into the student perspective before we go later into the kitchen to see how the sauce is made. I'm about to pop back into Canvas, but I just wanted to show you to reassure you that you do have access to all of these videos in the slides. So you'll everything that we're looking at, you'll be able to, to break down and look at and use whatever, whatever is helpful for you. So this video appears near the beginning of my English 101 course. After like the welcome and the orientation videos, it's the first time that we're really getting into content. And in three and a half minutes, I outline the major skills we'll focus on in the course. So let's us now get a little bit curious about whether the pauses and interactions that I'm gonna show you help students to engage with the material, to assimilate it. 
And I also want to invite you to think about how you might do them differently or, or even better. So put on the hat of my English 101 students. Um, let's, let's play like the first second here so you can see. Hi, students. They can play it right on the page if they want. They can also make it full screen and continue to play. There are two things. And then when they go out of full screen, they're right back onto the Canvas page. So for our purposes, we'll play it on full screen. That's gonna be a little easier for us. Um, Hi, students. There are two things we're going to practice throughout this class, no matter what else we're learning or working on. Those are, we're going to practice our deep and interactive reading skills. Okay, so um, we have our first pause. And the question is, which is closest to what you're feeling about practicing our deep and interactive reading skills throughout this course? And um, the possibilities are, I already feel confident about these skills. I'm excited to work on these skills. I'm nervous about working on these skills. I have very little confidence about these skills and I don't think I can improve. Or I believe if I can practice that I can improve these skills. So if you want, put in the chat which one you think we should check, uh, confident or excited or nervous or uh, little confidence or believe. Um, and I'll, I'll look at the chat and see what y'all think we should check. Okay, I see a nervous, I'll check that. I see confident, I see an excited. Oh my goodness, nervous, excited. Confident, believe. Okay, all right, cool. So, thank you all. Um, that's awesome. So, oh, and I see very little. Okay, so we got them all. Um, okay, so let us go ahead then and press submit. And um, right away, there's some instructor feedback. So, the humanized presence of the instructor is multi layered. I'm more there with the student as they move through this material, right? And they can kind of over time recognize like, yeah, this is this is really your instructor's voice. Um, so pretend you're a student at home alone moving through this. And um, maybe just think about like, is this pause helpful? Feel free to give a Zoom reaction. I don't think I can see your Zoom reactions. Feel free to just throw something in the chat um, if you'd like. Um, is this you know, is it helpful to have? Oh, wait, there are reactions. Yay, I see them. Oh, lots of thumbs up and lots of hearts. Beautiful. And other things are fine too. Like, oh, I'm still considering. Um, beautiful. So then we continue. And I'm going to get ahead and we will do this roll to the next pause. Okay, let's see. Okay, we'll give a few seconds before the pause. I want to say it with clarity, style, integrity, and our own unique perspective and flair. Okay, so um, you can have students actually submit writing on play posit, right? So they can actually give a written response and you can respond to that as well. So um, this is asking, is there a type of writing where you express yourself best? This could be anything like, text or social media posts, but you know, note on the refrigerator, scientific paper. So this student is gonna say like, I like to write texts on IG, on Instagram. And then they have a little bit of formatting they can do if they want. Maybe the student wants to, they, they can make a voice recording. They can put in a photo. They can put in emojis. Um, they can do some equations. I'll, I'll have them do italics. And then the student can submit. Um, And um, we can actually layer our responses, right? So thank you res for responding, press next to see my response. And then students can spend as much or as little time as they'd like on these responses. So now they can see the type of writing I like. They can see that I have a degree in poetry and um, that I put poetic language in places where it doesn't belong. And um, they can feel more connected to me or they can think, you know, I don't, I'm just gonna go out and I don't even wanna read this. I wanna keep seeing what we're gonna do in this course. So that gets to some of the student agency and autonomy. They can interact with what they want to interact with, what they feel a bit helpful for them. Let's continue and we're gonna skim 
to the last interval. And we're going to practice. Okay, so they've moved through learning about their first writing assignment, how to get credit, and then learning about three things that we're going to focus on in this course. Reading with metacognition, and they get like a little 30 second kind of introduction to each and tell them we'll be learning all about it throughout the course. And then we get to the end of the video. All right. So this video is only three and a half minutes, but it's a lot. It gets into what we're going to be covering for the whole semester, and it introduces each concept, building that all important schema, that kind of base of learning that I can build on as we continue the module. So now we can close out the video with this humanized connection. I can let them know that I'm there for them. So again, if you want to put in the chat, um, which of the following skills you're most interested in, the hat of my student, what would you, um, which one might you check? So I'll, I'll take a look at the chat, metacognition, meeting collaboratively, positionality, all of them, <laughs> metacognition, all three. Okay, it's a few all three. So I'll go ahead and reading and metacognition, I saw. Reading collaboratively, a lot of reading collaboratively. Whoa. Okay, so we checked all three, and um, there is now some more substantive response. So, you know, we're going to be really getting into this, so they they can read more of this if they want to. And um, and then they have a gift to pick, right? She's, and this, I want to hear from, um, I want to hear from you about this as well. So we go down, I don't want you to miss Oprah. Um, choose the gift that best represents your feelings right now. So we're right at the close of this video and they're thinking about what we're gonna be studying for the course. Okay, so I see little girl. Yeah, y'all choose. John Legend, the first one. Oprah, I think I was for Oprah. Um, okay, the second one, John Legend, Oprah. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, I'm gonna go with the little girl because and she's pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet. A lot of, lot of for the little girl. So now I actually don't give them, um, you'll see when I submit, I don't give them any auto response to this. And the reason is I'm now going to give them a little bit of global response to end out the video. Yeah, I agree. All right. So this is sort of the global response to the GIF, right? This is um, where I can... Um, just remind students that I'm here for them. And what says that better than a very adorable red VW, right? However you're feeling about this course right now, I'm right here with you and I will be from the start to the finish. And then we close. Let's get started. The video. And um, they can sort of see which, which assignments they did. They can, they can redo the bulb. There's a lot of different things that they can do um, at that point. So, that is an example of the student experience of an interactive video. And I hope you're getting a sense of what's possible. So now we're gonna see how the sauce is made. We're gonna go into the kitchen and see all the secrets. Um, so I just wanna say right now, like, don't be mad at me, but I'm not gonna take you step-by-step step through every kind of interaction and everything you could possibly do. There are a lot of options and possibilities. Um, and that would take our whole hour and more, but I do want to leave you with something more meaningful than that. Um, at the same time, I want to give you an overview so you have a sense of what's coming. And um, I see, I do, I noticed a question in the chat, threw it in the Q&A because I think it's an important one. Um, and we'll get back to it in, this, in a few minutes. But I do want to give you a sense of, of what this looks like and also, um, I just want to show you that I'm leaving you with the complete recipe and all the ingredients, and I promise you, you'll have everything you need to do this at home. So let us take a look at the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so um, on the left is the kitchen where we have all of our tools, and on the right is the raw video. So you can, these are interactions I've already made, and the sum total of these interactions is the the video we watched. I brought the video in, I created just that normal kind of screencast, brought it in and added the interactions. You can edit any of the interactions. So let's say I wanna put a, um, you know, a, a 
exclamation point here, something I can edit it. And then you can see you have all these options, right? This is where I added feedback. I can also go ahead and edit the feedback. So I put in emojis, I can put in images. We have all of these kinds of options as well. It was really, it's been really robust with options. We have placement options. I have it placed on the side of the video, but you can put it in any quadrant of the video as well. And then timing options. You can get into like very micro timing. So, um, and then done, and then that little edit is there, right? Now we have the exclamation point. Um, and then, oh, sweet, I see people are adding. You, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna actually, I, that question I do wanna answer was a question about not seeing play pause it in Canvas. You actually have it to have it turned on. It's available for free to all community colleges, but you may need to talk to your DE coordinator or team if it's not turned on in your instance. You also can, can get an individual account. There's a free level and a paid level. Um, Okay, so feel free to be in touch with me after as well if you want to talk more about turning it on in Canvas, and I think it's it's a it's a great idea to do that. Um, so as you go, you can kind of um, play your video. And then Hi, students. There are two things we're going to practice throughout this class, and then you can just add interactions right in the moment. Right, you don't have to like forward to them. You can where they pause is where you'll add an interaction. You have all these kind of interactions, multiple choice, free response, that's the writing, a check all, fill in the blank, discussion, web embed, we'll see an example, and then some, some mathy stuff, this cool auto jump where they can go back or forward to another place in the video. So it's really, really robust. But you know, I want to say at the same time, don't let that intimidate you from just starting with a few simple interactions. You all know that, it just kind of starts small. So, um, math stuff, yeah. Um, so, um, this would be a free response, like a writing, right? Like, um, like, what do you think of this video so far? It's sort of silly. Um, and then, you know, I can figure out where I want to place it. Maybe I want to put it over the whole thing, lock it all out, and then done. And then it shows up right there at the six seconds. So um, that, my friends, is a little bit about how the sauce is made. Um, and I also want to just let you know that uh, today's presentation, it's modified from one that I gave last year at the online teaching conference. And I was really lucky to partner with um, one of PlayPosit's instructional designers, Brady Benobles, and she made this really awesome goodie bag. And um, you don't, you can copy this, this link, but it's also, you know, it's, it's in the slides and I'm gonna show it to you. And it's not only the basics, but she also added how to do some of the dynamic and ungraded interactions that I've become really excited about. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at her goodie bag. It's really, it's robust, there's a lot in it, but I just wanna again, give you that extra confidence that you don't have to memorize anything um, for our for this session. You don't have to take notes on how to do things. So she kind of starts with a quick, quick overview, but I especially wanna show you these pieces that just have all of this, like really, you know, some of the questions you're asking, Super, super robust. How to build a bulb the, the first time. All kinds of like awesome, awesome. Um, how to use a rich text editor. All, all these kinds of things. So, um, let's see, like data monitoring. Everything you could possibly want to know. It's really, really robust. It's all in here, and um, this is kind of her special gift to us about how to do some of the things that we did here. So that is in the slides, you have the slides. So I want you to just really feel again, like you've got this, you're gonna be able to do anything that, that we did here. So the reason I say all of that is because um, I have been, and you know what, I'm so sorry, I haven't given Michelle, I realized the link to the slides. So I will, maybe I can even like make those really quick during Q and A or, um, I think she can get it to you right afterwards. I was looking at the chat again. Um, that was what that was about. So I, I just wanted to say a little bit about um, inspiration. And 
At the beginning, as we started the session, I promised you that this was not just about exploring the tool or just a how-to, but exploring how to leverage interactive video to get the kind of engagement that you want. So to do that, we're gonna start with curiosity and wonder as well, but first curiosity. I began exploring equitable grading like many of you, um, including fewer graded interactions. Around the same time, I began exploring using interactive video more creatively in my online teaching. And I did this because I was curious. It was, you know, 2020, 2021, and we could all see how the global pandemic was challenging our and our students' lives, our families, our physical and mental health and well being. And I became curious about what I might be able to do differently to engage students in both like in my discipline content, right? And just learning more and also in ways that spark their curiosity and their sense of wonder. So I started creating videos that fed my own sense of wonder. And figuring out that approach for me began with my reflecting on an extraordinary talk that I often meditate on. In 2012, 11 years ago, I saw the anthropologist and higher ed innovator Michael Wesch speak at my college, Glendale College, in a talk that he's given widely called The End of Wonder in the Age of Whatever. So thinking about the last two minutes of, of his talk always seems to ground me in my why for many types of pedagogical shifts and labor, right? The labor um, required to do those shifts. So let's take a look together at those last two minutes now. On the slides, which you'll have shortly after, um, I offer the full unmodified video, but to keep this pretty meta and some might say efficient too, I will play a version I created for us with only those last two minutes and I've embedded a couple of play posit interactions. So one play posit strategy is to begin with an to begin with an interaction, even before we start, it is kind of sets the tone or it's an anticipatory moment. So I'd love us to actually do this right now. Um, take a moment to reflect quietly on the last time you remember feeling a sense of wonder or awe. Where were you? What were you doing? What filled you with that sense of wonder? See if you can remember some sensory details too. What did it look like? Were there any smells or tastes? What could you hear, touch? Let's just take a, a moment and do that now. Just reflect maybe about 30 seconds. So if you have something you'd like to share, maybe a few words about that last time that you remember feeling a sense of wonder, go ahead and put it in the chat. You absolutely don't, don't have to, but Bryce Canyon, snow, an amazing light. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else has been to Bryce Canyon. I'm sure many of you have. That place is so beautiful. I cannot imagine. I've never been there in the winter. Chat GPT, I relate to that. I really relate to that. Any any time in nature, frozen lake. Yeah. Night, the moon was so bright. Mm. Montaña de Oro hike. Sedona, a full eclipse. At the beach, the energy of the waves, the smell of the sea air, the feel of the sand between my toes. Oh, yesterday, touching a super soft plant in the Garden of the Senses at the SCBG. Sense of wonder exercise. Oh, I love that. 
hike in my hometown of Tahunga, noticing the river near my house. Oh, these are beautiful. Keep going. I, I kind of, I, I would love to just, I'm going to keep reading these. Um, let's see the, the two minutes of this video about wonder. In uh, Wellington, New Zealand, where it never snows, and then it did. And so all these people are kind of stuck out in this. And you see, though, there's not a retreat here, right? There's an embrace. Uh, nobody's bundling up. Nobody's you know, zipping up their coats and nobody's running into the stores, they're all running out of them. And that to me is what wonder is really all about, right? There's like this in engagement of the world, even if it's uncomfortable. And there's a sense of like connection with each other. And there's really the two sides of wonder that I think feed into each other. There's the side of wonder that just allows you to have this sense of awe uh, that, so that even like a, a walk can feel enchanted, right? So there's this sense of awe where you're celebrating the world and so on. But then there's, the, there's a moment where that sense of awe and fascination turns to investigation. Like, uh, that it's not just about being in wonder, but wondering about things. And to me, that's the joy of higher ed, right? That we get to not only experience the wonder of the world, but then wonder about it. And those things feed into each other. The, the answers we get while we're wondering things don't shut us off from more wonder. They actually open us up. And, you know, we can start to see connections that are where we never saw connections before. And my favorite part about it all is just that everything starts to matter. Like little things start to matter. And in that sense, we really do become, you know, like kids again. It's this ever renewing process. This is the best we can hope for our students is to give them that gift of that ever renewing process of wonder. And it's something that can last forever. This is actually, you know, research has shown that, that it's one of the most changeable personality traits so that if you're not in wonder now, if you don't have that sense of curiosity and wonder, it is something that you can change. Uh, you should have a growth mindset about that because you actually can transform that part of yourself. And, uh, and there's really nothing more important that you could do, in my opinion. So. Okay, so um, again, go ahead and throw this into the chat. The question is, is a sense of wonder something you'd like to cultivate more of in yourself? And could be absolutely, or have a lot of wonder already, maybe or not. Okay, so I see not. I see a couple of absolutes. I see a lot of absolutes. So yes, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going with that. Um, this is my response. Me too. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Oh my gosh, this was really a joy to um, read through these. And then he closes out the video. That's my talk. Thank you. <laughs> So I'd like to kind of connect that to our next step, but before I do, I know that there are some questions. So I'm happy to take a couple of questions first. And I think- Great. Julie, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> ah. I am now trying to do this in the app on my iPad. So <laughs> let me tell you, I'm having all kinds of empathy for folks who try to, navigate um, on on mobile devices. Okay, so we've got some specific questions and some kind of bigger, broader questions. I think I'm gonna start with the, the tool specific questions and then go to the broad kind of larger like teaching questions. Um, first of all, and, and maybe Cheryl or, or Cheryl, you can jump in on this too, Julie. I'm not sure if, you, if you're a user of Canvas Studio, but there's, there's, there's just a general interest in trying to understand how the play posit features overlap and compare with canvas studio so there's there's can, is there any any specific thoughts that you have about that i mean it's so much more robust i, I think it's they're just very different tools um yeah I, I don't i don't know what to say i mean i know that I, folks that, that use both are just use both so just to break that down a little bit more for clarity, Canvas Studio and PlayPosit can be used to just host videos. 
and they can both be used to add interactive elements into videos, correct? Yeah, actually, I don't use Canvas Studio much. So Cheryl, you want to jump in? Yeah, you're correct, Julie. So Play Posit has more options for the instructor to create interactive uh, pieces, but you can use them simultaneously. Okay, thank you. Um, and what about what well there's an interest from um, Denise about seeing what the grade book looks like after students interact with play posit I know that's always tricky to show because you've got to go in and blur out um, student names but Julie do you have any thoughts to if you don't have an image to show to describe is that what that experience is like yeah so actually i'll be honest there's one clunky part that i don't love the rest is lovely anything auto graded it just the grade comes right into the grade book so and then you can go in to what i usually do is you can go into the the play posit metrics and i have them side by side with the grade book because what doesn't come in is student writing what they've actually written so to see if you have in my videos without student writing I um, don't need, you know, I don't need to go into the play posit, but in videos with student writing, I need to go in to see the student writing. I always respond to it in speed grader. Um, but as I said, the auto graded responses come in and I have a lot of ungraded responses or just grading for doing anything. So I'm actually not going in to see grades because they, they get a, a grade just for writing something, but just to see what they've written to be able to respond. Great. Um, what about mobile devices? So if you've got students using mobile devices, yeah. are all the features available through mobile? Yeah, PlayPass, it's super mobile friendly. And on that goodie bag I've given you, there's a lot, there's a whole mobile section. With all the awesome, screen that's screen. Yeah. super helpful. Uh, are, are captions built in? Yeah, PlayPass, it has an auto captioning um, that is, uh, Actually, it was better than YouTube's. I think things are changing so quickly. Um, so, um, but I be believe up until recently, you cannot correct captions within PlayPosit. So you need to bring in your video captioned. Okay. And if PlayPosit, let's see. So PlayPosit is provided through Tech Connect in our system, which is funded by the Chancellor's Office. And Merla, we have a, a, a colleague here from Tech Connect who um, can answer any questions that we're not fielding accurately. So Merla, please feel free to jump in at any time. Um, but if it wasn't funded by the Chancellor's Office, would we have to pay for it out of pocket? So is there a free version? Or yeah, a free, there's a, there's free, I think you mentioned that. There's a free version and a paid version. I think the paid version is 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 not super cheap. I think it's like two ninety nine a year, um, and then there's a free version that has some limitations. Um, yeah. And and may I just like give a little more information on this? Um, as you mentioned, yes, we are um, we're a grant and Chancellor's Office is funded by Chancellor's Office. And just to have a little peace of mind, uh, we have been approved for the next five years. So we do gonna have play posit and and and, and the life of um, the system for the next five years. If that if that's um, something, it's just a peace of mind for the faculty. Thank you. That's thank awesome. you, Merla. I did not. We appreciate that information. Um, Merla, can you, and or Julie, can you speak a little bit to uh, the accessibility of the interface overall? We already addressed captions, but what about other accessibility features? Has it been vetted pretty deeply for that? It's been vetted, you know, medium deeply. So um, I think we we ha we see that we have so many problems with LTIs, even within Canvas. I don't think PlayPosit is immune from those problems, but I think it says, you know, as good as we get, if that's helpful. Yes. Um, can an instructor add play pause at the course level if it's not available at the account level? Um, I believe so. I know that uh, oddly enough, before CCC Tech Connect funded PlayPosit, uh, many of us were using it in our courses. So I can't imagine that would have changed, but, um, but yeah. 
Yeah, I think that that, that is very much governed by the institution. So the institution I would recommend, that. just as Julie said earlier, each of you reach out to your distance education or our academic technology partners, who whatever that is referred to on your campus to get more information about that because there can be so much variability based on uh, campus instance. Uh, the, so the thing I will question. say is that you can certainly use a PlayPosit video in Canvas, like you would show a YouTube video, and it will be interactive. But the integration with the speed grader is so lovely. So I think that's what you're asking. And I, I don't think it should be a problem, but it would be specific. Um, I think I'm going to move forward a little bit, just because we're um, maybe we'll have a little time at the end for some more PlayPosit specific questions, if that's OK. Okay. okay, yeah, I've got two broader arching questions about teaching that I was putting aside. So if we had a few minutes at the end for those, that would be awesome. Perfect. Okay, we will, we will make every effort. Um, thank you. These are such good questions. So, um, and I'm excited that y'all are excited about PlayPosit. And I'm not a PlayPosit expert as well, I should I should say, um, but they their support is lovely. And um, yeah, they're, they're just, they're very um, strong believers in what we do and how we do it. And they want to see PlayPosit used in these sorts of ways. They're really excited about student learning. So I want to go back now to that, um, thinking about the um, the two minutes that we just saw from Michael Wesch, if we can um, rewind for a couple minutes. Um, so Wesch in that hour long talk is, you know, the entire hour, which I highly recommend, but even that final two minutes, he makes a case for a kind of virtuous circle of wonder and awe leading to curiosity and questions, which then can lead, I feel, to scholarship and critical discourse, right? That's like the brass ring. That's where we want to get to. So what does cultivating wonder in ourselves have to do with interactive video? We're pulled in so many directions in our pedagogy, our scholarship, our schedules, our lives, but our own ability to experience awe can help drive us to grow in our own teaching so that we can give that to our students as well. So curiosity can both inspire wonder and be inspired by wonder. And I wanna dive a little bit deeper into curiosity. So we're gonna take a look now at the first two minutes of a talk. And this time we're gonna look at, um, Ramsey Masalam's TED Talk, Three Rules to Spark Learning. I don't know if anyone has um, is familiar with that talk. And again, I've layered interactions onto this video with PlayPosit. And again, you have access to both my video and the original video in the slides. I teach chemistry. All right. All right. So, <laughs> So more than just explosions, chemistry is everywhere. Have you ever found yourself at a restaurant spacing out, just doing this over and over? Some people, some people nodding yes. Recently, I showed this to my students, and I just asked them to try and explain why it happened. The questions and conversations that followed were fascinating. You know, check out this uh, video that Maddie from my period three class sent me that evening. <laughs> now, obviously, as Maddie's chemistry teacher, I love that she went home and continued to geek out about this kind of ridiculous demonstration that we did in class. But what fascinated me more is that Maddie's curiosity took her to a new level. If you look inside that beaker, you might see a candle. Maddie's using temperature to extend this phenomena to a new scenario. You know, questions and curiosity like Maddie's are magnets that draw us towards our teachers and they transcend all technology or buzzwords in education. But if we place these technologies before student inquiry, we can be robbing ourselves of our greatest tool as teachers. <laughs> I saw the closed captions kind of uh, said what he was about to say. So, um, I, I love these kinds of anticipatory pauses in learning um, because, or these anticipatory questions, they help me get more curious about what the presenter or 
you know, the video is about to argue or get into. And I know it does the same for our students, um, right? So like someone can throw something in the chat if they want to for me to write. What is our greatest tool as teachers? I see something here. Storytelling, I love that. Okay, I'm just gonna put that back. Our curiosity, that's it. Empathy, oh yeah, I love that. Yeah, I don't know if I misspelled that, but I'm gonna let it go. There's a little auto response. And um, my first answer is connection relationship, but I'm interested in exploring other answers. And I don't disagree with what I heard on this video. I love that folks are still going on that in the chat. Um, let's see. Our students' questions. For example, flipping a boring lecture from the classroom to the screen of a mobile device might save instructional time. But if it is the focus of our students' experience, it's the same dehumanizing chatter just wrapped up in fancy clothing. But if instead we have the guts to confuse our students, perplex them, and evoke real questions. Through those questions, we as teachers have information that we can use to tailor robust and informed methods of blended instruction. So. Okay. So this is a called a pause response. There's nothing you have to do. And it says, we're gonna stop the video here and discuss the idea of student curiosity for a minute. But before we do, I just need to say who else loves this expression while doing this experiment. He looks as if he honestly does not know each and every time the bulb will light up. I love that. I think it's hilarious. Um, so I, I want to give another chance to reflect. We've done a lot of reflection and I want to do one more reflection. And the reflection is, what are you curious about? How can you grow with video in your own teaching and what might that change or shift for students. So I'd love you to take a minute to reflect um, about your own curiosity. So when you're ready, think about what you're curious about, about how you can grow with video in your own teaching and how that might shift something for students. And feel free to put it in the chat. How to appeal more to visual learners. Yeah. I definitely want to think about how I can make students feel more present in an online course. So curious about that, right? Like curious about how to spark the joy of learning, reaching all types of learning styles. Curious about questioning all of the assumptions. And hey, Shelly. Um, curious about how to spark interest in the topic. Students can be more engaged and motivated. Beautiful, oh my gosh, so many lovely things here. So I love the curiosity. And let's see how we can get deeper into curiosity and wonder in these videos. So I'm gonna show you one more example from my course. So this was where I really shifted. Um, as I continued to work with PlayPosit, I began incorporating more explicitly ungraded and optional interactions. And I also worked with teaching heavy, content heavy interactions. So I'm going to show you some of what I tried and share the benefit of my trial and error based on the PlayPosit and Canvas metric data and on student feedback. So this next video was a TED Ed short, a creative video on poetry. And this one is really different than the first one I showed you from my course. This is one of the videos where I woven meaty, theoretical, and long interactions. They're really dense, and we're going to have to skim them lightly for time. We're nearly out of time. We would have had to anyway. Um, 
So I, please don't be frustrated by the, you know, skimming them, but I did want you to see this other possibility of delivering primary instructor created content layered onto a video created by others. Okay, so this first interaction, this, again, this sort of anticipatory um, question is in the tradition of the KWL chart, which some of you know from K through 12, what you know, what you wanna know, and what you learned. So they, they ask, there's a question at the beginning, I'm asking them about poetry, um, introducing the question, asking it, and then I'm letting them know that I'm gonna ask a pretty similar question at the end to see what they've learned. From there, we are going to scroll. Let's see. Okay. Then what exactly makes a poem a poem? Poets themselves have struggled with this question, often using metaphors to approximate a definition. Is a poem a little machine, a firework, an echo, a dream? Okay, so which of the four metaphors for poetry do you like? Uh, throw it in the chat. A little machine, a firework, an echo, or a dream? A dream, an echo, a dream, a firework, an echo, a dream, a firework. Sweet, okay, we'll put those. Um, then we can see that something very different is happening now from what we saw before. Um, on the left, we have a little instructor feedback from me about those you know, different possibilities. But on the right, something totally different has happened. You can see quite a bit of instructor created content, content me, the instructor, that's layered into the short video. So I want them to go quite a bit deeper with the idea of metaphor. And instead of creating my own new lecture or handout or sending them to a textbook, I'm layering the content I want them to have that I have written into this video, right? So I'm, I'm telling them a little bit more about metaphor. But here's where it gets like super duper layered. Um, after I share more about what metaphor is and how we use it, a bit about connotation and how that connects to metaphor, a little bit about visual imagery, getting again, really layered and dense. This is actually not just a simple page, it's another assignment. Um, and I call it a weird assignment. And because I can remain interactive here and then return to the video seamlessly, I can kind of risk this total weirdo assignment. And because it's ungraded, this total weirdo assignment where I come up with my own connotations and visual imagery to match these four categories. And I tell them that theirs would be different. Um, and, and I ask them to just, you know, and they would ideally spend some time on this. And, and like, um, spoiler alert, they do spend some time on this. And kind of think about it. And, and in trying to figure out what mine would be, maybe think about the relationship between connotation and metaphor and visual imagery and metaphor. So. Um, Again, it's a little bit dense, so I think we're not going to get into it and try to answer it. But um, it's it's a poetry really generally thing to has certain recognition. So let's go to one more. I know we are going to really close to needing to wrap up. Opfel and Eugen Gomringer's Silencio toe the line between visual art and poetry. Meanwhile, E. E. Cummings wrote poems whose shapes were as important as the words themselves. In this case amplifying the sad loneliness of a single leaf falling through space. So you can embed websites as interactions. And I and this might start to help with the difference between this and Canvas Studio. Um, I use that as an opportunity to help students discover two of the most reliable sites for finding a diverse selection of canonic and contemporary poetry by extraordinary poets, as well as to extend the lesson they just saw on concrete poetry while adding additional culturally relevant perspectives. So on the left, I explain what we just saw and how it connects to what I want them to explore. And that's more instructor created written content. This time I'm choosing to put it on the left. Um, and then there is an instructor 
curated right poem selection i also tell them that they might want to sign up for to get a poem a day um that that's a kind of a cool thing to do when they might want to and i tell them that they can listen to this poem too and kind of talk about why and how this is also a really cool example of concrete poetry so i'm able to layer in all of this content and then they go right back to the video. And I had wanted to show you, I think, one more, but I, I think we do not if have the time. Visual nature I want to make sure to get to your question. I'm going to pause at it and see if there's anything really quick I wanted to say about it. This language in a way that is powerful, direct, and filled with vivid images. So again, it really, you know, I just want to say it gets denser, right? There's, there's, I'm connecting what they've seen to this to an image and to, um, so this is the image on the screen from the video to then this website with um, this poem, August Diary by Peter Balakian that they can then scroll through. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna stop there and just kind of wrap up very quickly. Um, I just want to say super fast. I guess only leave us like one minute for questions. But um, my engagement was, you know, much higher than it had ever been. Once I higher when I started doing interactive video, and then much higher when I started doing dense, ungraded, optional interactions. Um, students self-reported. Students, um, I saw that in the metrics, students spent time with these interactions that were not graded. Um, so in some cases, I had given the same material in, in quizzes and other forms, and students spent more time in the interactions that had no nothing they had to do than studying for a quiz with these same. I was going to play the student video, but I don't want to, so I can give a minute for questions. I mean, I want to, but um, Michelle, I know there was like a big teacher question. I'm happy to take that on if you. Um, well, I'm going to condense real quickly. What? tips would you give someone starting out because play posit does feel a bit complex when you're first getting started as with any tool it gets easier but what advice tips or strategies would you share with your colleagues who want to jump in yeah that's such a great question i mean given the the theme of my talk i would say lead with a sense of awe and wonder rather than like where can i put a quiz question or something lead with what can i where is a moment to stop and pause or reflect or ask a question or do something? Lead with what you think would be a nice moment to pause in the video where curiosity could be sparked and then create a single interaction that, that does that and a simple interaction. And maybe put one more somewhere else in the video and that will be lovely. And then that'll feel good and you'll start to use it. And then like any new tool, if you're as old as me, like when we first got smartphones, we we're like, what, how, like never. And now it's so easy. Is that, I hope that's helpful. So start small, start small. Start small, um, but lead with, lead with, um, rather with than wonder, with all right. the different, yeah, with all the different cool things you can do, lead with what you think will really get to this result that you want to get to. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you for sharing so much of your teaching, your, your philosophy of teaching and how you approach wonder through using interactive video. Um, there are a lot of folks who are very eager to get their hands on your slides. And so what I would like if before you folks log out, here's what's going to happen. One day from now, and I know my video isn't on, sorry, technical issues. Um, but one day from now, you're all going to get an email saying thanks for attending. I'm happy to put the link to Julie's slides in that email. So you will all get it sent to you. Um, I think that might be the most direct, direct way. So Julie, if you could share, um, if you have the link to put in chat now, great. Have, but if you I'll could also share it with me directly. I'll put that um, link. Okay, yeah, if you could do that now, that would be great before folks yeah. log out. Yes, we'll do it. Maybe. Thanks for being here, everyone. We appreciate you joining us for our second to last series uh, session in the Going the Distance webinar series. Uh, one more quick reminder, we have one more coming up on May the 4th, um, and it's going to be a great one. So don't miss out, and we hope to see you then.
Thank you so much. And thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Um, and I did this just is a tr tricky one. <laughs> leave a lot happening in the chat, but um, I'll give it to Great. you. Great. I see it. Okay, okay folks. Not hopefully, you see that link. Um, you see that link from Julie. Go ahead and tap on it, it'll open up on your screen, and you will have that um, available. Those slides available. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Well, and I'll put it in one more time. Yeah, I'm going to leave that up for a minute just so everyone has a chance to click on it. But um, let's see. Cheryl, you can go ahead and stop the recording if you'd like, if you haven't already.